Some believe that we are born with predestined roles. There are those who are born merely to follow like sheep. And there are those who sit atop the throne, looking down at all of those below them. Hello and welcome to another video. I'll be talking about the king of the field and the most intriguing character in all of Blue Lock, Baro. We are introduced to Baro while everyone is fighting over the ball. And he just lets those peasants of Blue Lock fight amongst themselves and steal the ball. Telling Isaki he will end him if he doesn't get out of his face. Then proceeds to heel flick over Isaki, dancing around everyone else and easily scores a goal. And right after this is the most insane quote that can come right after a goal. Hear me now suckers and remember my words. For me, the ball isn't my friend or any nonsense like that. It's a spherical servant that exists solely so I can shine. On the field, I am king. That quote has so much aura around it and is just an introduction. This did many things to help me understand Baro's character, that he has an insane ego, has talent, and sees everyone as beneath him. This is something that I'm looking for in a blue lock character and I bet Ego is looking for a player just like Baro. Calling yourself king has to be one of the most badass things you can do in a soccer anime. Also, my god, does Baro have such a great character design and the aura that I'm looking for in my character. A serious face, the main character type haircut, and his build is just perfectly balanced. The insane pressure he puts on Isagi's team by just existing is insane, sending so many people to mark Baro just to forget everyone else on the team. When Isaki's team finally scores, Baro tells Isaki, If you get nervous in front of the goal, you're not cut out to be a striker. You have no talent. I don't think he was trying to say that the goal was bad, but the whole idea of being in blue lock is to be the best striker. My guy was just being so direct and badass, it's really hard not to love him. When Baro is training, Isaki tries to get some tips from him, but Baro is not having any of it. Just starts a 1v1 with Isaki and just shows him how big of a gap it is between them, showing why he is the king in the field and earns that title. Complete dominant, even with Isaki trying to learn and adapt, it's just still not enough. Baro loses the first round of the next selection and is sent to face Nagi and Isaki. Even after we the viewer know that he lost the previous match, he is still as cocky as ever. Nagi and Baru start taunting each other saying some sweet banter to each other that had the themes of kings and servants which is always so cool to hear, hyping up the match between them that is soon to come. During the match you can see Baru try everything by himself. Even if it isn't the most optimal choice, he will score alone no matter what, refusing to use his teammates and rather have them serve him throughout the match. It is so scary to see Baru just blindly charge into Isaki and Nagi like wild animals, refusing to even think of another way but charging forward to as many people as possible because he knows no one can stop him. One of my favorite lines that really defines his character during this match is, I will live as I please and win as I please. Some will say that simple minded and this thought process in general, but like I said before, I love characters that are true to themselves. Yet Baru does have a moment of weakness that I find so fascinating. It isn't until the 3v3 match where we get to see this drastic change. All three of them are struggling to find any type of synergy with each other due to Baru's stubbornness. Isaki and Nagi take it upon themselves to win, using Baru as bait and he sees his two teammates using him and not needing him to make any goals, feeling left out and possibly the same way that he makes his peasant teammates feel. Desperately looking for the ball, he does not find his ideal shot, so he does the unthinkable. Baru passes the ball to Isaki. His whole ideal shatter, and we see Baru's character begin to change. He has fallen from his throne and started to allow others to run the field that he so proudly ruled. Just as you see this weakness start to overflow his subconscious, seeing the desperate despair gripping upon him and the future that may lie in front of him, he drowns it in his own ego, crushes any form of weakness that resides inside of him from that path to Isaki, devouring everything and everyone to awaken who he truly is. He is the ruler of the court, everyone is allowed to be on it because he permits it, breaking out of his self-doubt and forming his new path. 
There is more yet to come for Baru, but since season two of Blue Lock is right around the corner, I don't want to spoil anything or any of the hype moments for him. I encourage everyone to watch season two or even read the manga because it's insanely hype and incredibly drawn. Some of the panels are just truly unbelievable. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate your time. Let me know your favorite character in Blue Lock and why you like them or what is your most anticipated part in season two. I would love to discuss this with all of you in the comments below. I have been your bestest bro, and I'll see you when I see ya.